Yeah, I think Mysterious Monkeys, they just don't care anymore either. I mean, they, you know, they're just playing for like to play. Bokonski coming out of nowhere. Dreams getting killed number one. Looking for Hill saying they just need to pull that red stacks out. And Yuki gets a second. But they just don't have to fight for anything yet, just for the pride, you know? Yuki's, um, like he beat me a couple of times, but I feel like he wasn't ever like a dominant player. He has these cheesy picks that he plays, but I don't think he is close to being a threat against me. Who's caught out all alone? The rest of the team, a double kill for Kikis. I mean, if he wants to cheese me, if Kikis wants to cheese me, then he can bring it. I, I don't really care. Like, no matter what cheese he picks, I think I will win. I think um, my matchups against Amazing um, would be pretty even usually. But as for now, um, I don't see anything in particular in him that I could be scared of or I, I should look out for, you know? He's not going to win the game by himself. There is no way. But he's the sacrifice for the start of this fight. And all of a sudden, things aren't looking too hot here for the Unicorns. It's anybody's Baron. An amazing smite it down. And would you believe it? They're going to clean house. Down goes Shachi. A triple for Yuki. Even if you guys might beat us next time we face, it still won't be enough because we'll still be on the top of the group. Welcome to Berlin for more action in the final week of the summer split. H2K and the Unicorns of Love are in a close fight for the first place, and a lot can be decided in their two matchups tonight. That is what the crew is here for. Unicorns of Love fans, they're always plenty and unlimited, as well as the Mysterious Monkeys gearing up one of their last passages in the ULCS before heading to the promotion tournament. A little bit of fun with the camera as well. Good afternoon, I'm Efi Shogu breaking down the action alongside Andrew Verius Day. And I have to say, Veri, I love your tie today. Thank you very much. I love your dress. You're looking wonderful. Thank you. I also loved your tie yesterday. <laughs> so that's settled then. Well, let's talk about what else happened yesterday. Some unexpected matters. Fnatic, they hadn't lost since week three. And they were looking for yet another victory against the last place ninjas in pajamas. But NIP, they shocked the top team, took a 2-0 win in perhaps the biggest upset of the year, that is, what is was it the biggest upset of the year to you? Oh, I mean, it certainly was. Watching uh, NIP play so impressively against Fnatic in game one with a convincing team fight victory with, with comfort picks, they were making work extremely well. But in game two, the fact they were able to hold onto an exposed Nexus for such a long time, not overstepping, not overcommitting, and just waiting for that one opportunity to find that perfect fight where they can get themselves the 2-0. It was an impressive NIP to watch yesterday. Fantastic control throughout both games. And what does this mean for the promotion tournament? They have to play already next week to keep their spot in the LCS. Yeah, I mean, NAP, they look good. Uh, that's the, the bright side for them coming into this tournament. And I think that their goal of trying to stay in the LCS from the split is looking more likely if they can repeat that performance from what they demonstrated against Fnatic. We'll see if they can hold on to that. Another unexpected result yesterday because earlier the Kingslayers rock at they struck again as they gave the reigning champions G2 their very first loss since week four and much like the series of NIP versus Fnatic it was not cheese it wasn't anything unexpected or a throw it was just good play good team fight good shot calling in both of the games they won I mean in game one you could argue oh G2's comp yeah, a few question marks maybe rock at they had a Zach. lucky yeah I mean you have to credit that too right but then game two you saw a return of G2 uh, more of what we expected. And then you think following that game, they were just hard stop. But game three, comfort picks were given on either side, and we just saw clean, impressive play overall from Rocket. Plight Stalker, a person that we highlighted at the beginning of the day, really stepping up and having a massive impact, along with the superstar AD carry of Yana. And we have to remember, Rocket had nothing left to play for. They are in that safe fourth spot in Group A, so they were playing unhinged, they just wanted to have fun, but they played a fantastic game. Maybe one of the guest games they've played all split. Yeah, I think they can be happy ending the split like that, also maintaining their record. So far, they lost to the sub squad of G2, but then they were able to continue their dominance over the full roster as they did in spring. Quickly before we move on to the standings uh, for G2 and Fnatic in terms of conclusions, you could say they did pick some things that they weren't absolutely used to or that they practiced all the time. They did want to try a couple of new things. However, we still expected them to close out those series. Yes. 
Yes, and I've seen a lot of public sentiment, which is very much that, oh, is this really the top quality of Europe right now? This seems a little concerning, but I feel like fans shouldn't be concerned. It was just one series. Everyone has that, those moments of underperformance. Both teams were definitely experimenting, and from hearing down the grapevine, it definitely feels like they're still saving some of their top picks for some of the later matches to come. Well, the later matches will be playoffs for G2 quarterfinals because they have no chance of catching up to Fnatic in first place. If they had beaten Rocket, they would have, but woulda, coulda, shoulda. And then if we look at today, the Unicorns of Love and H2K are still fighting for that first place spot, and they should just win their matches. But if anything, if yesterday was any indicator, there could be an upset on the cards. Yesterday, you said it's not going to happen. Rocket isn't going to beat G2. We have that on yeah, tape. I, I'm, not, so. I'm, not, uh, I'm not making any more predictions today. I, I think it's a little bit hesitant. But the key thing to note here is that if H2K win their matchup against the Mysterious Monkeys, then they're in a much better position to challenge that first place spot. Whereas it also puts more pressure on the Unicorns in their series versus Vitality. Because if they lose, then that first place spot gets locked in for H2K. So both these games still matter for the top teams. So perhaps Vitality and Mysterious Monkeys can cause some upsets like we saw yesterday. We'll see. It's going to be up to H2K to show that they won't be upset. It. I don't believe that is a verb. Uh, but they have a lot to play for here in week 10. They're going to start against the Mysterious Monkeys in the last place. And usually when we think of matches uh, at the end of the season, H2K usually always takes it seriously. I remember that Splice yep. H2K match from last split, and they also regularly don't drop any games versus lower tier teams. So what are we thinking of H2K going into the playoffs, be it quarterfinals, be it semifinals? Have we seen growth this split? I feel like we've definitely seen a change in the play style of H2K. One of the big criticisms that uh, we had of them in the past was that they seemed to be very early game focused. They were really good at objective control. They knew exactly what to do with the lead. But against these top tier teams, they couldn't quite get that same level of lead. They, you had much more of a neutral game between both sides. And then they made these risky or gamble decisions, which ended up backfiring. But now this split, we see them be a lot more calm and articulated. They know what to do when the game is in more of an even state. And that's what makes them more exciting in terms of being able to challenge the other top teams in Europe, and especially into playoffs, that leads them into a good chance to make it to Paris. Well, as you mentioned, the top teams, one worrying sign for the uh, for the fans rather of HK might be that they haven't been able to beat any of the top four teams. They haven't been able to beat the Unicorns of Love or Fnatic in G2 most recently. They did only beat Fnatic once, but that was last split. So is that any reason to concern knowing that crunch time is actually only next week or possibly Sunday versus the Unicorns of Love for that first place? I think it's definitely something that you should always have in the back of your mind. Um, the reality is that each H2K, we always have these high expectations of them. We always predict them to win out against these other top teams, yet they never do. That consistency, even though against the lower tier teams, just doesn't seem to be there yet. So I feel like there's a lot for them to prove going up against UOL, which will happen later on in the week. But they've got to start by taking down the Mysterious Monkeys. Yes, Mysterious Monkeys stakes are very, very different for those monkeys. They're locked into the promotion tournament. So much like NIP yesterday, they sent a message to Schalke and to Giants. Maybe Mysterious Monkeys are looking to do the same. That's what I would like to see from them. They did make a few roster changes by bringing Kikis and Amazing. And initially, things looked very positive. We saw a lot more improvement in the team overall. And then when you pair them up with players like Yuki, who've been really consistent, Q and Dreams developing as individuals, they looked promising. But how well they challenged H2K will be a big indicator of what they're looking to bring in the promotion tournament. Today. In the video, Yanko said, well, amazing if he does well, he's not going to win the game on his own. Yesterday, we saw Hiku, for instance, not winning the game on his own, but doing really well. Is there anyone you see that doing on Mysterious Monkeys? I could definitely see it being Yuki. He had some impressive Kalista performances against Unicorns of Love fairly recently. And I think that if this Kalista pick is given over to these bottom tier teams, I think the talent ex exhibited by these AD carries is something that these top teams have to recognize. Well, let's see what happens. We'll see if the Monkeys can go out with a bang against H2K. Here are our casters for game one. Thank you very much, Shox. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Aaron, Medic Chamberlain, and at my side is the man who inspired Star Guardian Ezreal. It's Martin Deficio Lunger. I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I think so. You've got the the jaw for it. You know? What is the pose? He does something like whoosh or something like that. That is the most impressive. Pose I think that's I've what he's doing at least. Out of you. Anyway, coming up on the blue side for this game, we have H2K, a team in fine form at the moment. Strong macro play, strong late game as well. They seem to be hitting their stride at the right time. Yeah, the patch really benefits H2K. A lot of the players, as you just highlighted, performing at a very high level. Orama in the top lane, Yankas in the jungle, both really standing out. And I think front runners to also, you know, really challenge for that first All Pro team here in the EOS. Now the voting's are happening. 
We'll have to wait and see how those votes do pan out. Mysterious Monkeys are fighting from the red side. They selected to be on the red side as well for game one. A team that is going to battle in the promotion tournament over the next couple of weeks. And they have a lot to prove today with NIP performing so well yesterday. Yeah, and Rocket as well. Like, basically, the bottom teams yesterday beat the top teams. So Mysterious Monkeys and Vitality have to do the same today against HK and Unicorns of Love. Otherwise, it's kind of embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And you have to remember as well for H2K and Unicorns, they haven't locked top spot of Group B yet either. They want these wins. If H2K win this game and Unicorns lose versus Vitality, H2K take top spot in Group B, something that they haven't done in a long, long time. We're going to get into yep. picks and bans. H2K on the blue, Mysterious Monkeys on the red. And we heard uh, Oda Amna, I think it was, talk oh, it was Yanko, sorry, in the opening features talking about how Mysterious Monkeys, they don't really play for anything. And sure, in terms of standings, they don't play for anything. But in a week from now, they're playing promotion to they're playing for a lot. They need to use this as great stage practice against a good team in Europe. Come in as prepared as possible, as we just saw NIP do, you know, yesterday. You want to win here as monkeys. It gives you confidence. It kind of confirms that some of the things you're working on are actually working for you. And it might set them up for success in the promotion tournament. You don't want to get 2-0 spanked completely by H2K. Especially considering they're facing up against NIP, who won yesterday against Fnatic. Giants, who are looking very good. And Chalka, who are looking very good in the Challenger mm -hmm. Series as well. We do have a few bands coming out here, Mark. Uh, Deficia, almost called you Martin. That's episode. fine. Too personal already. Maokai, Jarvan, the Zac, and the Caitlyn being taken away. All right, so Jarvan ban. Uh, H2K very clearly looked up Kikis and he saw the queue. Uh, the last 30 games, I believe I saw like 27 Jarvan games and three something like NAR or something else. Like, <laughs> literally just spamming that champion at the moment. So taking it away obviously is also a flex pick. So far, no big surprises. Kate Zack coming on one side, yada, yada, yada. Maokai in the other one. Just Blue side right now is his preference. I'm like, what do we not want to play against? You know, Maokai, easy to use, good for a bottom tier team. LeBlanc can snowball out of control. Uh, they do take it away. And the Callista ban is the final one from the Mysterious Monkeys. A key AD carry in the current patch, 715, of course, the patch that we are on. H2K have first pick preference here. What do you think they're going to go towards? Do they want the lease for Yankos and focus on the early game? Do they want a scaling jungler for him and just pick something completely different as the first pick? Because Gragas is available as well as a flex choice. When our Elise is open, most teams will take her. Uh, same for H2K and Yankos. And Mysterious Monkeys probably expected this one, so what is the answer? Tristana would be my a go-to choice, Gragas can then tag along, and then you have a good first rotation. Gragas and Tristana would be a very strong combination for the Mysterious Monkeys. They may look up towards a tank in the top lane instead, though. Ooh. Or even the Orianna early okay. on for Cosq. Orianna coming in so early, like, she actually has a very impressive win rate. Uh, for a champion that's getting picked so much in the EULCS, it's over 70% right now. Uh, and a lot of mid laners are like, yeah, you know what, there's no real counter picks, we can just pick her whenever we want. I think Lucian is one of the answers that we've seen quite a few times that I always find interesting. Uh, just trying to win lane against her and see if you can snowball. And uh, Febben, he can definitely play Lucian if he wants to, but Syndra is also available, so is Talia. Those are the more standard picks. Here's the Tristana that I would have loved to see Mysterious Monkeys grab. And we do see the hover. Now, Azir can be picked against Oriana. We saw it yesterday. It did not work out too well for Caps at all. It didn't. I still believe in Azir. Febben uh, does not want to pick it for now. We'll have to wait and see what he is going to pick here. Expect it to be a mid laner, though, because otherwise it's going to get taken away in that second phase of bands. A lot of different options for him. Could even go for the Thresh. We haven't thresh mid lane, him yeah. yet. Yeah, Thresh mid lane is incredibly <laughs> good to this year. All right, we get to chase Thresh. Definitely been one of his best champions this split uh, for one of the best supports as well. Uh, it's your case. Che down the bottom lane, always looking fantastic. But I think the monkeys are not too concerned uh, with H2K putting so much focus on the early game just yet. They do have quite a strong laning phase on their hand with Orianna and of course Zyra Rakan. A lot of playmaking, which I think is important. Like you need safe and easy engage to use. If you're not relying on fancy macro, Sometimes you just gotta be able to click one button and start a fight. You can do that with Rakan. And giving Yuki a champion he's relatively comfortable on when he has been a key member of Mysterious Monkeys in these late game team fights. I'm really interested to see how effective they are in that bottom lane. It is a Lucian ban, so Mysterious Monkeys read your mind, and now H2K will look to their first ban of the second phase. Yeah, only problem for the Monkeys is they can't really ban out February, because Syndra or Talia will be left open for sure. A both will be very strong picks in the current meta. I'm meaning that I'm sure Febrion will be okay. And maybe he still wants to play the Azir. We could see it. I really want to see it again. Uh, I definitely think I it really can work. I really don't. Uh, yeah, come on. It yesterday. All right, all right. But 
What HK is uh, showing us so far is just like insane setup for Yankos to succeed. Like Thresh in the bottom lane to help Elise set up ganks. We haven't even seen the top lane pick yet. Things like Renekton would be available. Rumble, if you want to after a few levels start pushing kickers on the tower and then tower dive with Elise. Like this to me smells like the game where Yankos in true Yankos fashion can just go completely off early on and just gank everything in the early game and get a massive advantage for H2K. And Yankos' early game hasn't really been his key component this split. He's been much more about playing tanks, getting later onto the game, a bit more reliable in that sense. Has actually lost the first Blood King title. For now. To, for, for now, to Broxo, who has three more first bloods than him across the course of the split. Jace was banned, as was Shen by H2K, and it's a Gragas lock for the Mysterious Monkeys. Right, so far, still a flex choice. A Jarvan, of course, was banned earlier, so that is not available for Kickers. Top lane, though, you can de definitely still go Rumble here if, if you want for H2K, but you might then actually want to look for a physical damage mid laner. Uh, with the Lucian ban and Jace ban, that seems to be why they do not want to go for any AP tops. And just take the Renekton for even more setup for the good old Yankos. Yeah, they are just listening to you, Deficio. Both these teams reading your mind, and it will be such a strong top jungle duo. Tower diving early on is something we tend to see out of the Renekton and the Elise combo. H2K now looking towards that mid lane for Biven comfortable. Yeah. So many different champions. Syndra's definitely in his wheelhouse. So we got CC from the Thresh in the bottom lane, some CC in the top lane from the Renekton. What about a little bit of CC setup in the mid lane from Syndra? Pair that with their Elise, and you have a draft that is focused around getting ahead in the early game from H2K. A lot of scaling on the side of Mysterious Monkeys. Gotta be careful, it's not too much scaling as well, because then you don't even get to the late game in the first place. And that's actually why I think Rek'Sai makes a lot of sense. A little bit more early pressure for Rek'Sai compared to, let's say, a Gragas jungle, right? You can actually have quite a lot of successful ganks on this Rek'Sai. Your scaling is not as great, but right now, Mysterious Monkeys, they're concerned. Can they even get to the late game? That is the worry, and especially when you're putting a lot of your impetus in the early game on someone like Amazing, who's actually fallen off in the last yeah. couple of weeks. He really needs to step up to fight off against someone who's so strong in the early, like Yankos. Both these teams now are locked in. We've talked about the early game setup for HDK and the ability for Yankos to gank, but how do they actually win the game after getting ahead? I mean, oftentimes, if you have a comp like the, the one HDK is showing us, with like Renekton and Syndra, these champions, once they get even slightly ahead in the game, like a half item, maybe a full completed item, like you can just keep forcing plays. You can always push in lanes because you're the stronger in the mid game and you can use that to literally take over the entire map. Like pick one side first, cover that, use it to play around that side. Once you get the advantage, swap sides. You don't care. You have a winning top laner, you have a strong mid laner, you have a fantastic bot lane setup with Thresh to spare with the Elise. Like HK should be able to put pressure on multiple lanes at the same time and playing against that is often Close to impossible. Especially considering how clean H2K have been over the last few weeks. Probably one of the teams that are the best coordinated out of any of our top four. Yesterday we saw Giants fall as Fnatic and G2 lost to the bottom teams in their group today. H2K and the Unicorns of Love tried to prove that the top teams in the EU still belong at the top. It was such a weird day yesterday. Watching from home, just being like, yeah, you know, this is gonna be 2 0 2 0. Fnatic's gonna lock first, it's all great. Fnatic did lock first, which is not the way we expected. Uh, and it actually means now for a game like this, HK, they have a chance to show that they are the only top team who's consistently actually taking care of the bottom teams. And that word consistent is not one we have used about H2K a lot this split. Time and time again, we say they're an inconsistent team. They have great highs, but then they have bad lows as well. Across the last few years, they've been incredibly consistent in getting to playoffs. They have three third places, one fourth place, and one fifth sixth across the course of their EU LCS career. Probably one of the most consistent teams when it means getting to playoffs. When it, yeah, exactly. When it means getting to playoffs, yet they never make it all the way to the final. And a lot of people talk about choking uh, for H2K. And I think it's a little bit overused. Uh, I personally used it myself as well in the past, but it just kind of becomes a little bit lazy uh, point. Well, when you say, oh yeah, H2K choking playoffs, you know, blah, blah, we don't want to talk about them. But like last split, they didn't choke. They just got so outplayed by Fnatic, who actually came in with a playstyle that literally just countered everything H2K were trying to bring to the table. 
Because if you guys remember, it's all about camping bot lane. That was where HK had issues with communication, the Koreans, obviously, and the rest of the team. And that just got abused so hard by Fnatic that it wasn't choked. They just got outplayed. And this split, I feel like they actually look better than normally. Uh, the last few weeks, they have, as you said, consistently looked super, super good. And that's the first time I really have this feeling about H2K showing up big time in playoffs. And someone is going to take this part, clip it out, show it in a few weeks after they have failed miserably in playoffs. And I've already got someone you doing know, it. Yeah, I've yeah, got someone I know. clipping I know. their Twitch board already. But it's important to note that they haven't secured first spot yet, Deficio. They do still have to win out today. If Unicorns lose later on against Vitality and H2K win this game, of course they secure first. But most likely, it's all going to come down to Sunday, where H2K and the Unicorns of Love match up against each other. And that's going to be a sick one. Obviously, Group A is more or less decided at this point. Not the same for Group B. Let's see what Amazing wants to do. Took the Raptors, took the red buff. Trying to find Yang, because he will find him as well. Level then he runs away. He's got a level disadvantage. The Cocoon has to be flashed away by Amazing, and this is the early pressure we wanted to see from Yankos. You said his lanes can help him set up. He got level three first, and he forces Amazing back. Now he's already top lane with the Renekton lane. You always want to play around it early. Bot lane, a bit of fighting, but Nuclear understands how to get out of this combo here from Dreams. Yankos still sitting top lane, already level three, and he will soon try and kill Kikis. And this actually just sucks for Kikis, because normally it's Amazing going top lane gank for him. Now it's Yankos. He's getting betrayed. Look at that minion wave stacked up as well. Yankos actually walks in, walks out. Amazing will realize that Yankos is doing those drugs. And the question is now, how well these top lane jungle duos can react to the play? I think uh, Yankos here. Oh, actually, he's bot lane. Ah, no, mind, no, mind. Just a little bit of trading. But I think Yankos probably realized the full HP Gragas was a little bit difficult to kill with Amazing potentially still being top side. Uh, so he played the safe. Amazing, no flash. Stunned up straight away. Here comes Kickers across the wall. Yankos down to 200 HP. Amazing low as well. Yankos has to jump away. They're going to get the knock up onto Odo one there. Yankos flashes in. First blood king once again for H2K. And they get away. H2K plays superbly well in the early game. Amazing lost his flash earlier when he found Yankos in the river. And then he still goes for that play up in the top lane. Kickers could have just sat back trying to pick up all the farm he needed. Yankos already stepped away from the potential tower dive, but then with the re-engage from Amazing, it was clear H2K could just focus him. No way out once you engage here as a Rek'Sai with no flash. And that is a very early first spot for the Elise, and exactly what you want if you're H2K. Great hook onto Yuki as well as Che pulls him back. Nuclear puts down an explosive shot and gets a bit of extra damage down onto the Zaya. It's been such a good early game already for H2K. Yankos is ahead. Where does he go from here to really snowball this for H2K? Do you continually look top, even though Kickers has saved his flash? I mean, top is always the easy one to go for because your Renekton will always be stronger in 1v1. Meaning, if the jungler then shows up with you, well, actually, let's see if we're on kill him. Flash away from Kikis. Oduwamne just harassing in that lane. Yes, yeah, so this was the 1v1. Let's pretend both junglers join. Well, funny enough, the Renekton is still stronger than the Gragas, so the 2v2 is also in favor of H2K, meaning they're not afraid of a counter gank from Amazing. So Yankos can just keep playing topside if he wants to and really try and shut down Kikis, who, by the way, just lost his flash. And has burned his teleport to get back into the lane. It's a compelling point about Yankos in this early game because up until now, he's been performing a lot better on tanks than he has on these early game junglers. Yeah, and I actually think the whole uh, tank jungle meta really benefited H2K in terms of the consistency. Because on Elise and Lee Sin, Yankos would gamble in the early game and sometimes it would backfire and he would fall behind, he would make a risky play, no one could follow him in an invade or tower dive. And H2K suddenly didn't look great in the early game because of some of those moves. Right now, when Yangus has been playing tanks, he didn't need to risk anything. You had scaling. You could just wait for team fights. It was fine. It actually made H2K a more consistent team. Doesn't mean he can't play the early game junglers. We just don't always see them. And as you saw there, a lot of success so far, especially on Zac, with the, what was it, 62 KDA? 62 KDA. It's the yeah, highest classic. KDA of any player in the league at the moment. And it's pretty close to my Twitch KDA from Solo Queue as well. I played with your Twitch. I'm pretty sure you die a lot more times in lane than that. Yeah, but I get so many kills that the KDA uh, okay. just keeps going up the and up and up. At the end, Odo is going to take a trade in the top lane. Kick is no flash. Can he belly bop his way away? I don't think so. He jumps back 
into Odo. Think again, Medic. Yeah, this is he this is the reason I'm not an OCS top laner, but Yankos is an LCS jungler and he's looking for another kill. The wave will push in. He puts out a volatile spiderling to keep kickers in the lane. The stun, the cocoon, the CC chain from H2K. And you know life sucks when it actually would have been better to just dive 1v1 instead of giving over an assist and a kill now. So the fact that Kikis ends up staying alive just meant Yankos could pick up an easy one. Mid lane though. Looking for the kill on Forbidden. He'll use Ghost and Flash. He dodges away from the Shockwave. Three members of Mysterious Monkeys were mid. They realize they are losing control of this map. Yeah, and think of uh, Mysterious Monkeys early game like, like a shotgun. They have a few big shots they can go for to try and get back in the game. This was one of them, you know, roam into mid lane, try and kill Febivin. But on the side of H2K, they can just keep spraying again and again and again. Yankos can keep ganking. Mid lane, bot lane, top lane. Their CC set up for him. He's uh, escaping for now. Amazing use of Flash. Shay's gonna land the hook as well, and of course there's no Shockwave available for the Mysterious Monkeys. A great cocoon onto Coscu will get cleansed, and H2K won't get the engage they want. I respect the amazing here for actually trying to make one of those big moves, you know, really see, okay, kill the jungler, get something more, get back in this game here. Your Mysterious Monkey's already down over a thousand gold. Sadly for them, those big shots, they're missing right now. H2K, they're surviving them. Yankos didn't even have to use any summoners right there because well even if you wanted to you could because there's no flash but like he could escape without anything uh, being used and suddenly flash is down from amazing he's no longer scary in terms of setup they only have to respect the fact he's high level but obviously yankers has a full jungle he can clear now and try and catch back up and h2k here have shown us how strong their early game can be Che once again landing a hook in this bottom lane this is a message from h2k to fnaf to g2 to the unicorns of love saying Look, guys, we're not gonna we're not gonna choke this time. We're not gonna do what Fnatic and G2 did on day one. We're not gonna lose to these lower level teams. We will control the map. We will play a very distinctive and strong style, and we will shut our enemies out of the game. Well, let's see if that holds true today. So far, it's a great start for it's, them. It, well, you predicted it. I, that's true. I've that's true. That's it. true. So the, uh, the caster curse cancels itself out, doesn't it? If two casters predict I the hope same so. thing. And the good thing was, Vedis did not make any predictions, which yeah, could so have obviously fine. jinxed the whole thing. Especially uh, with that tie as well. Oh, what was he thinking? The tie yeah. yesterday. I don't understand how that tie ever made it on broadcast, but it did. And uh, we all move on. We try to forget it for now. Yeah, we do. Dreams, trying to forget the nightmare that this bottom lane has been at times. But even in CS, and actually perhaps the single ray of hope for the Mysterious Monkeys as top lane has been the focus for Yankos. As we talked about with the Renekton always being stronger than the Gragas, so it is an easy one for him, but obviously killing the Gragas over and over is not enough. You actually need to get the tower. Uh, because once you get the tower, you open up for Odana to leave. He can go mid lane and put pressure. Suddenly you get mid tower, he can go top uh, bot lane. He can make a play there. Like That's always the key thing and one of the things HK always managed to work a lot on with Odana is whenever he has a, a winning lane matchup, it's not enough just to win lane. It's also what you do the next 10 minutes. How do you snowball your advantage into multiple other lanes? And that's something I think Odama does really well. It's something we should be able to track in this game once he gets the, the tower, because Kikis can't defend. Like, he's just gonna stack armor, sit there, be slapped around a little bit, and then he's gonna walk away and lose that tower. That he is. He's already about 30 CS down in that top lane as well. Mysterious Monkeys are trying to get vision control down towards this bottom side of the map. There is a Mountain Drake as well for them to Fisher if they want to go for it. Kikis has just burnt his TP up towards the top side though, so Odoane has the ability to react. All right, so Kikis trying to stay, or at least catch up a little bit in his lane. That's why he's sacrificing that teleport. But again, as you said there, it actually means that while the monkeys, you know, want to try and make something happen on the other side, they can't now. And that's actually always a very interesting debate. Uh, when do you just completely sack one lane and try and play on the other side? If Kegis had saved his teleport here and they said, you know what, screw it, I'm done anyway, I need this TP so we can actually play on bottom side, well, then they could have done that. But Kegis TPing back to his lane, he's trying to save himself and not fall too far behind, but it does mean the rest of the monkeys don't have an advantage anywhere to play around. So you might try and neutralize one lane, but still be a bit behind and then not really get an advantage. So it's always a fun debate. Should you sack one lane completely to play the other one? Play around mid lane. Right, here comes Dreams as well with the charm. They're going to jump straight back onto Koscu, though, and the teleport's coming in. Yankos on a killing spree. Three for him. And here comes Odo Omne. He's going to jump onto Dreams. It's another for H2K. Chain off to the side. Locks up Amazing. Kikis is getting tower dive. A great hook onto Amazing as well. We'll pull him back. Oh. And he even get the kill underneath the tower. Nuclear takes him down. H2K gets three kills and walk away. It's so beautiful. Like, they read Mysterious Monkeys here. They know exactly what's going to happen. So 
soon as Featherman is getting attacked, well, everyone reacts. TP comes in instantly. They're going for more. Flash in from Odo. He will get bought back. He needs to be a little bit careful as he's taking tower shots. Yuki's trying to trade a kill, but the exhaust keeps Odo alive. Okay. An amazing dice. It's smelling like a perfect game all of a sudden when you start seeing these tower dives early on actually work for the aggressive team. H2K, do stay alive. No towers going down just yet in this game, but still a massive gold advantage at 11 minutes. We said in champ select, this come from H2K super, super strong in the early game. And we looked at Jankos, we looked him in the eyes, and we said, you know, it's, it's you right now. You need to do so well, you need to perform. And every single move from Jankos so far, been a success. That it has. You can see what Mysterious Monkeys want to do. You say they have this shotgun, they try to make the engages happen, but it just didn't quite work. No, because H2K, with the map control, they're just around. They can always react fast and get to the mid lane before Mysterious Monkeys. Yuki had to run the long route around. Well, Nuclear just walks straight up river. He's like, hey guys, I'm here. I'm gonna fight him. It's so hard when you're this far down in terms of map map pressure already because you're just always gonna be outnumbered. I uh, could have flashed it from Yoki, but then Kegis uh, will have to sacrifice his life. And Che makes two superb plays. The exhaust right at the end to stop the kill onto Oduamne and the hook on it to Amazing. In picks and bans, we were saying he's probably one of our best supports of the split. We'll talk about that a little bit more as Kikis is just going to get dived once again. It's it's more of a eulogy than anything else whenever <laughs> yeah. we talk about Kikis now. Oh, and this is not the game you want to have with you, the Mysterious Monkeys. It's not even about losing to H2K, it's about how you're losing. Like, you're getting completely dumpstered, especially in the top lane. But hard as a Gragas against Renekton Elise. This is the man you just talked about before, Medic. Jay down the bottom lane, I think he is currently looking like one of the best supports in Europe. Definitely one of the most consistent supports. and. I think it's hard to decide between him and like Jesses and, and maybe a Mithy in there, but I think looking at the entire regular season, Chase definitely standing out as one of the absolute best. His numbers definitely put him at the top and some of the plays he has enacted, even in just this game, have been absolutely exemplary. In. Coming back to the mysterious monkeys as well here, Deficio. You look at NIP, well first Tower Blood goes down to H2K, thank you. Good job, and that's what you said you wanted to see H2K do. But Mysterious Monkeys, you look at NIP yesterday, had such a great performance against Fnatic. Giants and Schalke are coming off wins in their playoff tournament as well. Mysterious Monkeys will not want to finish with a loss, but it's looking pretty devastating for them at the moment. Uh, definitely a tough first game for this team here. Uh, I actually think, like, let's see what happens here, because Che is invading, but no one is reacting. But generally, like, the Monkeys, unlike some of the other bottom teams, kind of stopped progressing, uh, progressing a lot. I, I think, like, we've seen improvement from NIP now. We've seen Vitality actually slowly get better and better during the split as well, but the Mysterious Monkeys, it's... It was a rough week one to three. Roster changes happened. Honeymoon phase, week four to six, and things were looking much better. They were actually succeeding in the early game, getting kickers ahead on different split pushers. Yuki played really well in team fights, and they could actually start doing something. And then the last few weeks, once again, they've just been falling behind so consistently, and that's why they can't get any objectives, because if you're behind, how are you ever going to get a Baron or a Dragon? And the numbers just dip so far down. And they're going to play up against teams that are known for having better early games. Giants in Challenger Series have a strong early game that they play into the late. Schalke have a strong early game a lot of the time as well. And NIP, the only thing we praised about them is the early consistently game. is their early game. But H2K in this early game at the 15 minute mark have a 5,000 gold lead and they are looking for more. Already cleared two of those outer towers. Just need that one in the bottom lane to complete the set. Yeah, the one lane doing okay so far is the bottom lane for Mysterious Monkeys. We've seen that a lot this split. I feel like Dreams and Yuki have actually been holding their own for most of the games. It's the same here, but the problem is when the other lanes are losing, well, <laughs> you're no longer playing 2v2. There's, there's a mid lane now and jungle, and suddenly you just end up getting ganked and you have to give up your tower. They will have to concede that, and because Oduwamne got that first tower in the top lane because so much pressure was put up there, it's allowed him to roam into mid, which yep. has allowed H2K to bring more men down towards bottom lane. And it's just a nice, you know, coordinated setup. Febivan calls, I can go bot lane. Well, then Oduwamne calls, could, good, I will push out. I don't know why he said could, but he just said, 
with something else. Okay. He said, yeah, 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 no, I'm pushing top, this guy is whatever, inting, and then he goes mid, and then boom, suddenly you actually have pressure in every lane. Even without him being top lane anymore, because the waiver is already pushed down, but Ramna now will have to try and defend, and that was pretty easy. So he just killed the wave. <laughs> There's a lot of wave clear already on that Renekton. Has level 11, that level 2 ultimate available for him as well. Question, do you need to also get Rift Hilt or avoid the enemy team getting Rift Hilt for the perfect game? See, I say no. Because it didn't used to be yeah. part of it. I, I say no because I don't count dragons either. It's towers and kills. Ooh, I thought people counted dragons. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. We'll, because, take, we'll uh, take a little consensus afterwards, because they are going to lose the Rift Hill to Amazing. Yeah. So unless Oda One May comes down. So that is the question. Is it still a perfect game, even though you lose Rift Herald? Uh, I don't know. People can decide on Twitter. Can we say yes? Because then I think you have this really good comparison. Because Unicorns of Love, at the start of last week, actually, Charm's going to land here. There's the Shockwave as well, where it doesn't even matter, because they're going to get yeah, killed. There we go. You, you screwed it, Deficio. I did. It's because I didn't say they were going to get a perfect game yeah, as well. We, we worked out the cast of Curse it's still. It's a Monkeys get in and they get a little bit of gold back for themselves with a kill onto Forbidden. I mean, if they can use the Rift Hell as well to maybe get a tower, you, you get it, yeah, something back at least in this game. The problem is you've lost four turrets already. Uh, the enemy team is currently sitting and about to complete the second items and you are still just sitting with your first item completed. So it is extremely tough for the monkeys. Uh, amazing. Actually been able to do a great job in some just farming and keeping ahead in experience, but that's because Yank has been busy getting his laners ahead. Exactly, and he because he's been farming his jungle, the map now opens up with those towers falling, and there'll be less and less of that jungle for him to take because H2K will then step forward. And we said it in picks and bans, if H2K can get ahead early, they can force fights around objectives. We've got two and a half minutes for the Baron. We've got a Mountain Drake coming up relatively soon as well. That's where H2K will want to fight and try and force Mysterious Monkeys to try and react. All right, we might see here top lane, 2v2 being set up, so every lane is... is currently matching, just swap the map around, and that means once again it's about the junglers and what they can do to actually assist these lanes. Uh, currently, Yankos sitting with some early magic penetration, meaning he can almost one-shot uh, some of these members on Mysterious Monkeys. Cost you will find him and contest the vision, and you can suddenly see Che on his way. Che with the hook, Koskyu cleanses it away, has the Banshees and the Cleanse for extra protection in that mid lane, but as we say, he's already almost an item behind for Biven, who's picked up a Haunting Guys alongside those Sorcerer Shoes with the Muello Nomica. Always a great feeling, you are 0-1 yourself, you feel like you've been doing okay, you click tap, you see the enemy mid laner with way more items than you, he's been getting some kills as well, and you just realize you can't actually do anything, you can't hold your mid lane anymore, and the fact that Cross Q could actually contest this ward, that was a big thing in itself. Che right there could have killed him. If Che just flashed right after the cleanse happened uh, and just flayed Cross he would have died. But he didn't have visions to go for. But let's see here. Is, he's going to jump in onto Yankos. He jumps up, looking for the lantern. Can't quite get there. It's a shutdown on the Elise. And now for Bibbin and Odawan, they join the fight. Amazing gets the shockwave. The blast code brings Odawan in. A kill onto Amazing. Kick is still in the front line as Nuclear tries to open up the guns. Can't quite connect onto the mysterious monkeys. They will steal away a blue. Uh, a red and get a one for one. Yeah, get the shot down on Yankos as well here. So once again, the monkey's getting some gold back. Che, he wants more. Flash, Flay, he's just too tanky. Misses every skill shot, but it does not matter. As Oda One May will go on a killing spree on this Renekton. It was a zoning Flay right there. <laughs> Made sure he stepped towards H2K, and this mid lane tower looks nice and easy to take down. Nuclear with the Tristana on his way, and while it was a one for one first, the problem for Mysterious Monkeys is they will never just get these easy, even trades. They will always end up losing something after. This was another kill and a tower going down, and H2K currently sitting with that 8,000 gold lead at 19 minutes. Not too shabby. Yeah, you'll be pretty happy with that. Especially since we said we wanted H2K to perform consistently, yeah. like the team they have been over the last few weeks. And it's why it's so fun to watch H2K play at the moment, because the coordination is just much better than what we're used to seeing from them. Yang is right here, uh, ends up face-checking without vision, did actually place his ward, so we can't flame him for not thinking about the vision. He just didn't have it in the first place. And yeah, he might die, but now with Odama instantly TPing in, the rest of Mysterious Monkeys, very split up. You can one side, Koski on the other, so it's hard to use your front line to allow the back line to deal damage. They all have to kind of kite on their own. And then we see Che right here with the Yellow Star cosplay. Wait for it. Oh, there it is. He doesn't even use the hook at the end because he's just like, I can't miss all of my skill shots. No way there. No way. Just the one. Rip Toad was used in the top lane, but it will not secure a tower for the Mysterious Monkeys. So it may not be a perfect game, but it may be a perfect structure game 
for H2. Oh, I guess we're just finding new ones now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. And now I, I like that. cast it as I well. Like I think Che might have a perfect game as a support as well, where yeah. he doesn't get a kill and no deaths either. It's important with the support perfect games, you're not allowed to kill steal anything if you want to be the perfect support. That's only because you play AD carry and you just want to get all the kills for yourself. Yeah, but I used to play the kill stealing support to get a better KDA and I never, I, I was never proud. I was always like, you know what? This feels wrong. It's a dirty win when yeah, you steal all the kills as it a support. Is. Well, Che's done a pretty good job of maintaining that KDA as we showed earlier, 5.6 first amongst supports across the And that's the important one, the support KDH, yeah. you know, those are already important The problem ones. is we don't have any good metrics to track <laughs> support to Fischio. You need to find one. As a, as a previous professional support player, you need to work out what supports are meant to do and how we can track if they do that well. I do like kill participation on supports. I actually like early game uh, participation quite a lot. Like, how successful are you at maybe leaving your lane, going to the mid lane, trying to set something up? How successful are you at teaming up with your jungler to, to force a play? Uh, that's always something fun to look at, but yeah, it can be difficult, uh, especially because kill participation is such a weird stat. It's like, hey, you have a low kill participation. Congratulations, your team is getting solo kills in lanes. Exactly. So do you suck then or no, not really. It's just your team doing really well. So always a weird stat. Well, let's just take a quick re-evaluation of the game. There's an 8,000 gold lead for H2K. They now have double mountains and they're starting to pick up this second item spike we talked about. Odo Omne has gone for the Blade of the Ruined King, second on the Renekton. Mm -hmm. And alongside that Black Cleaver, and also has a BF Sword, just for a bit of extra AD. Yeah, gonna get the GA coming in, because of course, there's not really a lot of tankiness on his side with the Blade build, but it is the superior split pushing choice. And when you are 304 at 22 minutes, you can go for the pure DPS split push style, because no one can stop you, and an amazing escapes. Notice how I waited right there, that's a caster tip. So you set it up as, oh, I'm gonna say he's gonna die, but then you wait and you see if he escapes and you just change. That's where I've been going wrong the whole time. You just gotta I'm pause. I'm trying to be Nostradamus, I'm trying to predict what's happening instead of pausing, yeah. totally interrupting my own flow. Or, and yeah, trying to do it you can again. also drag out the name. Amazing! Oh, escapes! There yeah, you go. So that would work. And then you well, never make the wrong call. An amazing band by H2K as Yankos! Secured it. There we go. See, there we go. Thank you, thank you. Very easy. We never want to say anything wrong. Casting lessons with Deficio. Drag out the words. Let's see. Kikis wants to look for the <laughs> disengage. <laughs> this is disgraceful. He walked Deficio. away. He People walked are going to watch this VOD <laughs> and they're going to think you're giving them actual tips. <laughs> you realize this? It's like when you tell a little child something that's blatantly <laughs> wrong. It's like, Oh no, of, of course you're not hey, hey, fighting. Dreams goes in for the engage. He almost goes down. Oh no, one day will join the fight. And now they're looking for the backline. Che gets dreams. Yuki stunned up as well. Oh no, one day on a rampage. It's 2K. Close in for the win. They've got the Baron. They have 11 kills to two. And perhaps they'll take the game off this push. Yeah, I really feel like H2K, they're winning this game at the moment. That was a bold prediction, but it looks like H2K can take the first one here. Odamna, he wants more. He's hiding around the corner with Che. This is for MVP. Yeah, put more water. He in knows there. we look at KDA and he's like, I can build that's, up my KDA true. for the MVP. Give me more kills. Oh, the hook's gonna land from Che. Koskyu cleanses it away. But Lantern out for Odo Omne keeps him safe for the time being. Mysterious Monkeys, the unleashed power is not quite enough onto Kickers, but H2K are now pushing into the base. Gonna continue with the engage. That's an unstoppable Odo Omne as he kills Dreams once again, and it's all but done and dusted for H2K. They take an inhibitor in the top, Nuclear gets another kill for himself, and H2K should be able to close out the game. Got some minions coming, no super minions just yet for them, but I don't think they need them with the Baron buff here. Let's see on the side of Mysterious Monkeys, Kegis and Yuki trying to defend. Amazing is actually recalling behind. Uh, he's here now. We'll get back, but H2K have just looked absolutely unstoppable this game. Oduwamne and Yankos teamed up so well in the early game, and H2K, show us what you do if you are the first team in your group. You take down the underdogs and you go 1-0 up in the series. Just to remind everyone, if H2K takes down the Mysterious Monkeys, then Unicorns of Love have to beat Vitality later today in order for them to still try and get that first place. But now HK are making sure they are doing their job. I don't think they could have done it any faster. 25 minutes, complete stomp. And some of the issues, you know, when you end up drafting a lot of late game is once again, if you can't get to the late game, it doesn't really matter. 
I think Jankos had quite a nice game in the least, but also a game where it was fairly easy for him to go to whatever lane he wanted to. But you have to give H2K as a team credit for that because they drafted a composition that could get these early engages off in the lanes. They took a lot of lanes that if they had fallen behind, perhaps would have struggled a little bit more. Although with the Tristana, you could say they've got a bit of scaling going into the late game. Of course, yeah, well. yeah. I mean, it's never like that terrible yeah. in the late game, uh, but I think when you look at a performance like this, again, you, you look at Jankos, you remember, hey, this guy can obviously play the early game style. He also showed the late game with the tank. So it's great to see how flexible he's become. The only question is if he can actually do it on a cold, rainy day in Stoke as well. And if he's not able to do it, well, then we'll probably see him choke in playoffs. But who knows? That's a good thing. Playoffs aren't in Stoke. They're still in are Berlin sure? and then in Paris as well. Maybe they are. Maybe I've just been flying across to Berlin each week for no reason. And you just fly in a little circle on yeah, back just to around Stoke, Stoke yeah, for the go. entire time. H2K took the Nexus in game one, and they take the win. To break it down, I'm going to hand it over to our very own Star Guardians. Star Guardian Shock, Star Guardian Vedius. Take it away. Wait, you can't see the bottom of the heart. Star move Guardian it up. love. Move it up, move it up. Up it goes. Yeah, whatever. That was a really <laughs> uh, crappy heart. But thank you very much, <laughs> Medic. Uh, we didn't really know any poses, so we thought we'd give the viewers some love. And H2K definitely gave the game some love. Uh, fantastically clean from them. We do want to take a look at some of the specific instances in the draft particularly before we take a look at this replay, or actually we're going to take a look at it right <laughs> now, uh, the pressure that they decided to exert from the draft out with the Elise and the Renekton pick. Yeah, I really wanted to highlight as well how well H2K play this two versus two, because initially their goal is to disengage. The moment they realize Amazing is hard committed, Yankos is in a really tough spot, but notice he creates a gap, allows the focus to go back onto Odo, then realizing that Amazing's focus is no longer onto Yankos, he comes in from the flank and adds that additional bit of damage to allow the turnaround, and then they split up, they just separate themselves. But the pressure doesn't end there, because when you have Elise and Renekton, it's all about trying to get this Renekton ahead, when you have Elise, who's such an amazing tower diver, and I love the fact that they utilize this, this 2v2, that they've demonstrated in the past early on in the split that they could uh, execute so perfectly. Yeah, your point uh, when we were talking about the game during the game was that this is something that we've seen from H2K in the beginning of the split, but due to the tank meta, it's not picks that we've seen so many times because it's a slower early game. You're working more towards those team fights and the later game. So it's very interesting that H2K try and replicate the style again, even in the tank meta. Yeah, because the thing about the tank meta is, as you rightly said, you move away from this early game. You don't want to try and snowball your laners. You want your laners to go even where you transition into the mid and late game. And that's definitely benefited H2K in the last few weeks because it stopped Yanko's playing that hyper-aggressive, sort of risky gamble style. But he was able to get himself the Elise this game. They led it through. They didn't think they would put that much priority on it. But he does, and he has another fantastic game. There were a few instances where he face checks. He takes a couple of risky decisions himself, and he does get caught. But this time around, his team was there and ready to support him to make up for. Uh, if anything, he was the initiator in a few of those exchanges. However, still risky to go for that Elise and Renekton if you don't get it rolling. And even with a couple of kills, what are the possible risks involved with the fact that you're still going up against the tank composition, uh, which you maybe lack a bit of engage later on in the game. So it becomes a very similar situation to what we saw with Fnatic yesterday, where even if you have a great start, if you don't have a reliable way to start the fights, it can become very difficult when you're going up against some of these tanks that are still relevant in the meta because they have good disengage tools, they soak up a lot of the initial damage, and basically it just gets harder and harder as the game progresses. So if you're going to run this kind of draft, you need to know how to clean it out with the lead that you have. And in fairness to H2K, that's something that they have time and time again demonstrated they know how to do, and they did once again this game. I was just going to say, in this game particularly, they also had a 3,000 gold advantage at 10 minutes. They had a couple of early tower dives that worked out absolutely perfect for them, so there weren't really any notable hurdles for them to execute their composition. On the other side of Mysterious Monkeys, um, yeah, tough loss, obviously, because you do want to show something, but it didn't really seem like they could stop the snowball in any shape, way, or form. No. Uh, the, the reality was they were in this situation where they're going up against the least Renekton and you just have to play around it as best as you can. Something that we did see from NIP yesterday was that they were giving up lane advantages but out of respect towards the Elise. And even by playing that, it does not stop dives from happening. So it's very much on the jungler to try and counter gank as often as possible. And while Amazing was there a few times, we even saw how that didn't really work out in Mysterious Monkey's favor. So it feels like H2K, they do not want another day of upsets like we saw yesterday. No, they don't. They came to the office 
business and they just want to deliver a good job and clean this out very cleanly two to zero. We'll see if the Mysterious Monkeys have anything to say about that. We are going to take a short break. But do like Cassidy and Rift walk back to lane in time for game two. Stick around. Today, H2K and the Unicorns of Love try to prove that the top teams in the EU still belong at the top. HP amazing low as well. Yankos has to jump away. They're going to get the knockup onto Odo on there. Yankos flashes in first. Blood King once again for H2K. Here comes Odo on there. He's going to jump onto Dreams. It's another for H2K. Jay off to the side. Locks up amazing. Kickers is getting tower dive. A great hook onto amazing as well. We'll pull him back. Oh, the kill underneath the tower. Nuclear takes him down. H2K gets three kills and walk away. I didn't have patience to go for, but let's see here. Kickers is going to jump in onto Yankos. He jumps up looking for the lantern. Not quite they have just looked absolutely unstoppable this game. Oduwame and Yankos teamed up so well in the early game. And H2K, show us what you do if you are the first team in your group. You take down the underdogs and you go 1-0 up in the series.